now. The Mark Simone Show. On 710 WOR. Well, Ann Coulter, of course, the best-selling author and great columnist. You can follow her on Twitter You know, get all of her books. Uh, also, best place now is Substack. If you follow her on Substack, you'll get... Uh, Tweets, columns, uh, videos, podcasts, everything. It's annculter.substack.com. annculter.substack.com. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. So uh, what the hell happened last night with this election, especially here in New York uh, City? You got crime everywhere, <laughs> migrants everywhere, and they vote the same city council back in? How did that happen? No, I know. I, I I was watching the results thinking, um, wow, my book, Adios America, <laughs> may have been too late. Although if only Trump had kept his promises, he could have saved the country. But no, we have so many, so many people, the young people, the immigrants um, who are going to keep voting against civilization. And, you know, elsewhere, Virginia and Ohio, it's as I've talked about ad infinitum on my sub stack. And again, I did it last night and on Twitter um, last night and this morning, the pro-life zealots are killing us. And I am a pro-life zealot. Uh, as I said on the Twitter post today, you know, having the Supreme Court claim that it is a constitutionally sacred constitutional right, this practice, abortion, which let's be honest, it's immoral, it's gross. That was absolutely appalling, an insult to our intelligence. But once Dobbs overturned Roe v. Wade, well, hallelujah. I mean, there are a lot of bad things that are allowed in democracy. And, and our argument for 50 years was this isn't a constitutional right. The federal government should have nothing to do with it. Let the states vote. Well, the states have voted, and now seven states in a row, including very, very conservative states, States that went for Trump by 20 points, Kentucky, Montana, Kansas, now Ohio, you put it to the people and they will not accept the tiniest, the teeniest, tiniest restriction on abortion, Mark. I mean, in Montana, the initiative that voters were voting on would have only required life-saving measures if during an abortion, somehow, accidentally, the baby is born alive. And the voters who went for Trump by like 20 points said, no, we don't even want that. So we see that, that you know, Ohio is now part of their constitution, a right to abortion. These pro-life zealots are going to get so many babies killed as there are no elected Republicans left in the entire country. Well, I guess and I'm not anti-abortion, but I, I agree you got to have some restrictions. But uh, what's this going to this is going to wipe out a lot of governor's races? Uh, yes. in, in certain states. It killed Youngkin in Virginia. And by the way, as I explained in my in my long Twitter post today, uh, it, b- voters are perfectly happy with a 15-week limit on abortion. 15 weeks, that's a long time. That's, you know, what France has. That was the law that was at issue in Dobbs. Um, you know if you're pregnant, you know, four months in, um, three months in. Uh And that's what Republicans were talking about in Virginia. But the Republican Party in Virginia absolutely refused to make a promise that they would not go further, that they would not try to restrict abortion anymore. And why did they have to do that, Mark Simone? Because if they didn't, a pro-life zealot would primary them. So they're really there. And then, you know, I wake up this morning and get emails from some guy, Mark Harrington of Created We Go. Here we go. We're still we're not going to give up the fight for life. I'm sorry, Mark Harrington or whatever his name is. You're going to get so many babies killed. Hmm. Take take what you take half a loaf. You're not getting the full loaf. You're just going to blow election after election after election. Yeah. But, you know, you look at uh, Long Island. Both counties have gone with Republicans because they got a strong Republican Party out there. They had rallies. They got everything going. New York City is there the not the Republican Party non-existent in New York City. What can we do about that? Well, I don't know. I think it's going to take a strong. I I, I, I could be wrong about this, but a strong mayoral candidate. I mean, that's what saved New York thirty years ago. Yeah. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be a former U.S. attorney, but it would really help if we had a Republican president like DeSantis who could give us or a Trump. strong New York 
that'll be a 1964 Goldwater style blowout against Republicans. Get that out of your head. That will be the end, the end of America. Anyway, um, <laughs> it could be. I've heard the, you know, the former police commissioner. I've heard she's at least strong on crime. You know, she's a liberal black woman. She was chosen by Eric Adams, but if she's strong on crime, that's the single most important issue for any city. Um, and it's a big problem in New York now. You can't have anything if you don't have safety. You can't have parks. You can't, you can't have a, a subway that most people can use. Um, you have no life without safety. So explain the New York City voter mentality on the Upper West Side or wherever they are. All of a sudden, crime is back. Their neighborhood is now dangerous. Migrants are sleeping on their doorstep. How did they go vote for the same person that did this? What goes through their head? I, sus- I, I, I don't know, but I suspect that you're right, that what we need is a, is a stronger Republican Party to put up attractive candidates um, or independent candidates like Bloomberg. Um, but, yeah, the, I guess the Republican Party in New York, I haven't paid that much attention, but whenever I would meet someone um, at, the, at the Metropolitan Republican Club on the Upper East Side, you'd meet these people saying, um, yeah, and I'm running running for Congress in AOC's district. And I'd almost burst out laughing and say, why? Why? What is, what is the point in running as a Republican in New York? But there are some seats that we can win and some seats that will be close. Um, the, the Republican that will be primarying George Santos, I understand, is a very strong candidate. Um, but overall, I think you're right. We need We need a strong candidate at the top. Uh, hey, but the problem is they got these Republican clubs in New York. You appear at a lot of them. You do book signings, and it's it's all just a bunch of housewives chasing you around the room to take a selfie with you. You need what they have in <laughs> Long Island, it's like a real club that's out there in the streets with rallies and big events. How are we going to get that? No, you're right. We have a friend, um, you and I, who ran for whatever it was, the city council on the Upper East Side, and did better than any other Republican, and he was doing exactly what you're saying, standing at subway stops, passing out flyers. Of course, he's tall and good-looking, so that probably helps with the ladies. Well, whatever, but uh, (laughs) you can't just (laughs) keep having book signings at a Republican club and taking selfies and expect to win an election. But uh, Hey, this out-of-control anti-Semitism, this hatred, uh, yeah. Didn't Biden run claiming he was a healer, a uniter, he would bring us together? Well, isn't this going to sink him in the end? Yeah, oddly, that isn't what happened. No, and in fact, I mean, the media, MSNBC, New York Times, and our president himself have not ginned up so much hatred in this country. The anti-white hatred, one thing you haven't mentioned, um, is apparently, um, <laughs> apparently it's true, the transgender woman who shot up that school in Tennessee, um, her manifesto has been released, and it is just chock-a-block with anti-white hatred. Just exactly what we've been hearing and what has been coddled and promoted by the university, by President Biden, um, by plenty of elected officials, by, by college professors. Eliminate whiteness, white privilege, um, what what. I mean, you have the head of the FBI claiming that the biggest threat facing America is white supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing. Um, but this this ghost, this this they have they have young people absolutely on edge in fear of the horrible white people when white culture has accomplished more than any other culture in world history. Um, I mean, it's just a hideous thing to be attacking. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear that. What's that noise? What are you you, on the bus station? What's going on there? I'm I'm sorry. I went to the quietest place of the airport. Oh, you're the Uh, airport. (laughs) Yes, I'm sorry. And suddenly. (laughs) Well, that's okay. We're out of time anyway. But uh, get Ann Coulter's books. If you haven't read Adios America, it's really good, or Mugged, or any of her books. And make sure you follow her on Substack. You can get her podcast or videos or interviews or columns, everything. Just go to annculter.substack.com, annculter.substack.com. Uh, Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. Right, take care. Uh, oh, and everybody check out the webpage. Hey, when you see Donald Trump on trial, when you see this special counsel, his classified documents, go back and watch this video now and you'll be stunned at what Hillary Clinton did with classified documents.
and what she got away with and how many times she lied about it. Watch this video of her and Comey uh, going at it. You, you will not believe what she did and how they gave her a pass. Take a look at the video now. Uh, also, Don Rickles, first time he went to Denny's, came up with the perfect line. Uh, it's all up on the web page. Go to 710WOR.com slash mark. 710WOR.com slash mark. 